What's up? What's going on, guys? What's going on? Good evening. Welcome to the first official edition of Kidney Disease Education Moment here on Urban Health Outreach Media. I am your host and educator, Steve Belcher. Thanks for joining us. How's everyone doing? I hope well. Um, I'm so excited about, hey, June, how you doing? I'm so excited about this particular weekly show. And let me start off by saying, Kidney Disease Education Moment will be airing every Friday from eight until the information has been disseminated or, or at the end. So there's no end time is the end time is when I finish with the education. So um, I'm real excited about this and I think it's needed because from the show last night, and I apologize uh, not being on the show, I had some technical difficulties with my camera um, on my laptop, got the situation straight. So here I am. But as I watched the show, and I saw some of the comments being displayed. Um, I made a comment that we need to do another education show. So, I mean, this has already been planned for us to do one every Friday now. So every Friday, there will be a different topic talking about kidney disease education, mainly focused on um, kidney dialysis and what warriors can do on the dialysis machine and the education that is not being uh, fundamentally put out there. So we're definitely, we got some good topics, some topics people don't even know about, never heard about, uh, would be surprised. And we have that right here on kidney disease education moment. So the topics tonight, oh, before I start, please share this video. It's very imperative, and if you're a kidney warrior, it's your obligation to share this video because there's no need to hold on to this information when other people who are going through the same situation can learn from this as well, and they can apply it to their life or be able to be more mindful about their treatment and making sure everything is going uh, at, going is, is the way it's supposed to be going. So. Please share this. Um, maybe somebody's family member has someone that's uh, kidney failure, someone's relative, a brother, sister. This thing is kind of getting out of control. So we got to contain it. And you're not going to contain it with money, like with the American Kidney Foundation or the National Kidney Foundation with these walks. They've been doing walks for maybe, what, 15, 20 years? Is kidney disease has been increased every year. So what's, what's wrong with that picture? You don't see National Kidney Foundations on here doing uh, weekly shows, uh, sharing other people's stories. So I'm not bashing them. All I'm saying is put your money where the information is coming out so more information like this can continue to come out. So let's get started with this education moment. The topics that we decided to discuss tonight, the first one is dialysate, a dash of salt, a sprinkle of sugar, and a glass of pure water. So a lot of people might be saying dialysate. Well, first, the dialysate is the bath that's used to clean your blood during dialysis treatment. <clears throat> but um, some people may be saying, dialysate, a dash of salt, a sprinkle of sugar, and a glass of uh, pure water. Well, let me frame that up for you and how all that um, kind of comes together. So dialysate, which is the bath that cleans blood when you're on dialysis, is, is, a, is the clear solution, <clears throat> excuse me, is the clear solution that bathes or cleans blood during the dialysis treatment. As the title indicates, the ingredients of this dialysate bath 
include salt. That is sodium, potassium, calcium, and, and other electrolytes. Sugar, which is dextrose, is also included in this bath and treated water, basically um, pure water or water that's been through um, the um, um, reverse osmosis process. So the concentration of these ingredients is similar to the concentration that's in our blood. So these same uh, electrolytes that are in the bath <clears throat> that, that, that is being used to clean your blood is basically uh, uh, comprised of the same uh, concentration that's in your blood. So if you look at the dialyzer, um, excuse me for one second. Okay. Hey, Rob, if you look at the dialyzer, it looks like this. You may have others that look different. This is one that's cut in half. So you can see what I'm about to uh, show you. So if you look at the dialyzer during the dialysis treatment, okay, there are four lines attached to the dialyzer, okay? Two are filled with blood. That's right here where um, the arterial line comes in here and then the venous blood line uh, is attached right here. And then this is the dialysate hose line where the dialysate lines where the bath comes through here and then the waste comes out of this hose and go into a drain behind the machine so that's um four plastic lines the dialysate one here that's two uh arterial up here and the venous so that's the four lines uh that are attached to this filter uh, as I said, two are filled with blood, the blood lines, and two are filled with the dialysate, which is right here. Uh, inside the dialyzer, the blood and dialysate are separated. Inside here, there's a thin membrane that you can't see, and it separates the blood and the dialysate, okay? Now, <clears throat> The, the, the membrane is called a semi-permeable membrane. This membrane is shaped like straws. And if you see right in here, this is, this is, this is part of it, the membrane, these, these fibers that they're talking about, the straws. Now, um, straw, each straw is called a hollow fiber, which I just said. It right in here, hollow fiber. The blood flows inside each hollow fiber. The blood, let me get it up here. The blood flows inside here. So when you when you see the, the dialyzer up like this, when you're having your treatment, I'm sorry, when you see it up and you see the blood filled up, they're going through these hollow fibers, okay? And what's happening, they, they flow inside the uh, fibers while the dialysate flows outside the fibers. Okay, so the blood is inside the fibers and the dialysate is outside the fibers and is separated by that membrane. And so what happens, how dialysis occurs is when molecules, oh, so I'm going to get a little scientific, but I mean, it's really self, I don't want to say self explanatory, but just listen. Dialysis occurs when molecules or fluid moves through the tiny pores of those straws located in the walls of the straw. With diffusion, particles always move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. By controlling the concentration 
or makeup of the dialysate, we can control which particles will diffuse, just meaning which will cross over the membranes from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration out of the blood, okay, move from the blood to the dialysate. So what you want to happen is the particles to move outside the blood. We're talking about the waste that you would normally uh, urinate out. We want that well, that's coming across the blood, okay, fusing out into the concentration, which will diffuse into the blood, move from the dialysate to the blood. So it's kind of like the, when the uh, bad, uh, when the waste is going out, the fresh particles is coming in. It's like an exchange, you know, the fresh bath is coming in, the old bath is, is, is pulling out of the blood. Um, or which will not, or nothing can happen. You can manipulate where no movement will happen. For example, potassium. Since most kidney failure patients have extra potassium in their blood, the concentration of potassium in the dialysate is usually set lower its concentration in the blood. Let me read that again. Potassium, since most kidney warriors have extra potassium in their blood, the concentration of potassium in the dialysate is usually set lower than its concentration in the blood. Diffusion then causes Listen here, diffusion then causes the extra potassium to move from the blood to the dialysate because the potassium in the dialysate is set much lower. So remember, the, the diffusion, the area from high concentration to an area low concentration, okay? So when this happened, when that when that extra potassium goes across into the to the concentration of lower potassium, then it goes to the drain. It goes out of the hose down into the drain. And this is just steadily happening for the three to four hours you're on treatment. Okay. The warrior goes home with the lower potassium level than when you arrive for treatment. So if you come, I mean, it, it, it says it for itself. When you come in and your potassium is high, you go through the process, your bath, which has a lower potassium. See, we use in the dialysate, and I wanna bring, I wanna bring an empty jug home one day and show you. Y'all you know, know how the uh, dialysate looks, but, I want to show you the compensation label on it, but um, the dialysate in these baths is normally, the potassium is normally at 2.0. You may hear people say, uh, you're on a 2K bath. All that means is you're on a 2 potassium bath. You may hear, hear some people, your potassium may be low, and you may be on a special bath, and you may hear somebody say, I got to get your, your bath. You're on a 3K bath. You're on a 3 potassium bath, which is a higher potassium bath because it's going to correct your low potassium in your blood. You can lose potassium through diarrhea. If, if you somebody that has gastrophoresis and you're, you're back and forth um, to the uh, bathroom, and or if you have. Um, irritable bowel syndrome, or some type of disease that's causing you, uh, in addition to kidney disease, that's causing you to have chronic diarrhea or constant diarrhea, even uh, type 1 diabetes person, then your potassium, you may lose a lot of potassium through the, um, through the diarrhea, so they may have to supplement uh, 
with they may they're gonna try a diet first. Uh, have a dietitian talk to you about eating, increasing your potassium. Uh, not going out and eating a bunch of bananas and nothing like that, but just uh, increasing your potassium diet. Or they're gonna uh, put you on the three K bath and increase it. Now on the flip side of it, if you come in with a high potassium, like seven or eight then or if you are chronic coming in there with uh chronic high potassium like six seven they may put you on a 1k bath and that helps lower your potassium and get it into a, a homeostasis or a, a balanced state so let's talk about bicarbonate or which is similar to baking soda you may hear people talk about your bicarb. We got to make the bicarb bath, the bicarbonate. So at one time, uh, back in the 70s, 80s, I started in 85, but I remember when we were uh, using just acetate. Hey, Lawrence, thanks for tuning in. We were using acetate and a lot of warriors at that time was getting sick from that from the uh you know acidic the acid because you're all right your blood is already acidic from having kidney disease now just imagine extra acid from the bath um so bicarb we call it bicarb but bicarbonate again which is similar to baking soda uh kidney failure causes a person's blood to become acidic the bicarbonate in the dialysis helps neutralize. So it, 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 it like neutralize, like bam, that's it. No more uh, high acidity. We want to neutralize that, uh, this extra acid. And diffusion causes the bicarbonate in the dialysate to move into the bloodstream where this neutralization occurs. So this is occurring in your blood. Um, you may see some people go into uh, the emergency room um, with uh, acidosis, being high, acidic, um, hyperventilating. So you definitely got to uh, be careful. But these, um, the dialysate is very important. You should know uh, what dialysate the unit is on a lot of units run on central bath which means everybody is running on the same bath uh, from a central location this bath is being made in a dish uh, somewhere off the floor normally in the back uh, where they call the water treatment room and it's being it's being um, uh, it's being made with pure water uh, the bicarb, which they mix it in the tank. It's a large bag. I think it's like a 40 pound, no, it's not a 40 pound bag. Um, gosh, um, I, I can't remember uh, the size of the bag, but it makes about 200, and, no, it makes about 100 gallons of bicarb. And the acid, which uh, it's called granular flow. Uh, it's made with pure water, and they pouring it in a tank and mixing it up. And this is being delivered to all the dialysis machines uh, on the floor, which is called central delivery system. And you may have some patients that's on special baths, like a low, a low calcium. I mean, let's say high potassium, low calcium, low potassium, high calcium, uh, low calcium bath. So um, two other electrolytes um, that can also vary in the dialysate are sodium and calcium, which I just said. So the sodium can vary and the calcium and the way they adjust the sodium is on the machine and uh, the calcium is through the calcium baths. Um, so basically what happens in a nutshell, when you start dialysis, your doctor or your physician uh, writes a set of orders or dialysis prescription on what bath you should run on based on his analysis 
of your laboratory work or and laboratory data. Each patient may have a different prescription. Uh, some patients, like I said, run on the same bath. Some people run on different baths. Uh, not everybody is going to run on the same prescription. Thank you, June, for pointing that out. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to inbox me or ask, um, excuse me, or better yet, don't just ask me, ask uh, the people that deliver your treatment because that's what they're there for and they should have the same education that I'm telling you they should know this because they are certified hemodialysis therapists. So they have to be certified now. They should know this information. And if you're not getting the education, I challenge you or encourage you to ask them to, um, what's that bath. Uh, next time you're in the, uh, at your treatment and your technician is putting you on, just ask them what type of bath are you on? What's your blood flow rate? Uh, what is your heparin dosage? What is your dialysate flow rate? Ask questions. Get in front of this disease. Uh, don't let it get in front of you not knowing what happens when alarm goes off. You got to know this because I'm telling you, the staff shortages are getting uh, enormous and, you know, machines are going off. You can't find staff. Patients don't know what to do. They're just sitting there, um, just looking around, trying to figure out where's everybody at. And the machine is steady alarming. And while that's happening, the blood is clotting because it's sitting still. It's not moving. So please be very mindful of this. Share this information. I, I, I can't stress this enough. I, I've come to realize that no matter what I do and no matter what National Kidney Foundation do, American Kidney Fund, these multi-million dollar organizations that say they're doing research to end kidney disease, which is a lie, and other things, no matter what we do, kidney disease is still going to come. It's coming at a much faster rate. People are being diagnosed daily. It's out of control. And so since that's happening, we got to shift our gears to um, hit this at every angle. Uh, the pre, before dialysis, during dialysis, after dialysis. We got to hit this from all angles. So, um, if we miss the person and they on dialysis, at least we can arm them with information. So when you go to treatment, you know what's going on and you can hold folks accountable. That's what it's about. Holding people accountable that has your life, your life in their hands. That that it sums it up. When I when I went to work, I still go to work, but I'm no longer a charged nurse due to my injury. But when I went to work, every day in my mind, that was, was the forefront. Your life was in my hands. And I knew that I had to do the best that I had to do. Because how can I explain to your loved one if you're on dialysis and you've been going for five years, no problem, and then the one day you go, you don't come home? What the hell happened that you didn't come home, that you expired? I mean, anything can happen, but what if something happened because of my negligence? Because I was on my phone or sitting at the desk doing this, having my head down, looking at Facebook and doing this and not paying attention to you. This is what's going on in multiple units across the United States and overseas. So I cannot stress enough. I can't, you can't um, um, get them all. And, and I wanna say, if you can't beat them, join them. But if you can't beat them, be aware, be mindful, know your treatment, 
know what's going on know your machine is not supposed to alarm if your machine know that in, if any machine alarmed it's a problem it's a reason why it's alarming okay find out why your machine is going off if you run in and there's no alarm and you're sitting there and everything is smooth sailing and you start hearing a beep and you look at your machine and you see these red lights going off that's a, a alarm i have books here where actually i gave them away but i'm talking about manuals okay manuals that when the alarm goes off there's a problem and it needs attention now let me show you something else okay i i can show you this because this is part of my library and i've gotten this when i uh you know i already knew the information in the book but when you work for the vita or, or for seniors they give you these training manuals especially if you're in a hospital but let me show you that nurses in the text are supposed to know this what that say boom what that say what that say the vita basic training workbook acute hemodialysis for nurses and technicians they are supposed to know whether it's acute or chronic Acute is a little different because uh, warriors or patients dealing with acute dialysis are a little bit more sicker, okay? However, the information is still the same, okay? So just be mindful. You know, the days of, oh, I can't, I can't get you that. That's, uh, <laughs> Protect, I, I can't say it, but you know what I want to say is it, copyright stuff. So I, I can't um, do that. I can get sued and, and I'm not trying to uh, lose everything I built up, but I can, I can definitely, um, you can Google it or see if it's around, but um, I, I, the information I'm going to be sharing with you is general knowledge and it comes from books like that. Okay, so don't worry if, if you tune into the broadcast um, and, and, and look at it, I, I definitely will feed you information what you should look for when you're in a hospital, when you hospitalize, um, your, your monthly blood work, when they join labs every two weeks. You know, you want to know these things, why they join blood, because when they join blood, you know, you got to think about your hemoglobin. You're already anemic. So why are they drawing blood? Uh, you want to know if 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 you see somebody coming over your machine alarming and you see people working on it, and then you see and they saying that we got to um, set up a new system. You want to make sure if you hear people say at the unit, we got to change your system. You want to ask them why. The reason why they got to change your system is because it either clotted or there's some problem with it, maybe air in the blood something you want to know why just don't sit there which a lot of people do because i seen it with my own eyes but i explain it to them i explain it to them what's happening okay because i want you to know what i'm doing every step of the way so it doesn't create any anxiety that may uh that you may already exhibit but a lot of people don't do this they just go through, tell you, we got to change the system, um, uh, you know, clamp your, your needle lines, disconnect, throw your blood away and, and just keep it moving, set up a new set and, and, and connect your lines and go through. And the next thing you know, the dietitian is coming to you t saying your hemoglobin is low or your blood count and you wonder why. <laughs> no, I know, I know, Ed. And you can't, you can't be afraid to ask what's going on with you. That's your right. That's your right. Matter of fact, Ed, thank you. Because I'm going to 
on, on the next kidney disease education moment next Friday, we're going to be talking about patients' rights and responsibilities. These rights and responsibilities are hung up in the patient's lobby of every kidney dialysis treatment center in the United States. They are required by the state and Medicare to put a grievance, uh, their grievance policy and the rights and responsibilities and the policies of the unit. So thanks, Ed. I'm going to be talking about that next Friday, 8 o'clock, here on Kidney Disease Education Moment. So let's move on to anemia because that is a big one that a lot of people suffer about. I even heard some interviews where some uh, misstatements about anemia was uh, mentioned. So I'm just going to uh, clear some misconceptions about anemia and just give you some things to think about. Um, and if you don't believe me, you can always uh, Google. This is evidence-based information that I'm telling you. Excuse me, my mouth is dry. This is evidence-based information that I'm sharing. And a lot of stuff, I mean, honestly, people, thank you for watching this because I don't sit around and try to come up uh, what I should talk about. It's like the spirit is it's some, I, I know what the spirit is, is God. He's telling me exactly what to say. I kid you not. He's telling me right now the things to say, what not to say, when to say it, when not to say it. <sighs> you know, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Don't be sad for me. Even though my career has ended as a charged nurse, Okay, even though it's, it, it, it's, it's ended, I rather, no, God told me when I thought about it, because this time last year, if something like this would happen, you wouldn't be seeing me on here. I would probably be in a psych ward. I mean, really, I would have really been depressed, but God said to me, I'd rather for you to help 30 million people instead of helping 90 people within one building. So that's what I'm doing for God. I'm going to help as many people, I hope millions outside of a building that holds 30 people each treatment. So let's talk about anemia. Take control to feel better because a lot of people. Guys, let me tell you, the, the work that I'm doing now is, is pretty much uh, better betting, but it's important. Um, I'm doing pretty much uh, synodary. I may not say that right, of work. I'm sitting you know, down doing work because of my back injury. And so the type of work that I'm doing is doing what's called POCs, um, plan of cares, where I'm looking at uh, Warriors Labs. And let me tell you, I've been seeing a lot of people with low iron sats. Because you need your iron saturation level to be up to help uh, with the, with the uh, hemoglobin or with your blood. You need iron in your blood. I've been seeing a lot of hemoglobins low like nine, uh, your hemoglobin should be 11. It should be 11. And normally when your hemoglobin hits 11, they, um, it should be between, let me just take that back. It should be somewhere between 10 and 11. And normally when it gets 11, they stop the epigen. And then when it kind of falls, see, this is what they do. It play yo-yo with your levels with your blood levels and when i say yo-yo meaning epigen and we all heard of epigen 
I have some sample bottles, um, but I'm not going to leave to go get them. But with the epigen, that's a very expensive medication. Very, very expensive. So can you imagine 30 people getting epigen? Some people get 6,000, 2,000, uh, 5,500, 10,000. Um, so, so, so this is what happens. They want your hemoglobin between, say, 9 and 11. When your hemoglobin gets to 11, they stop the EPO, okay? And then they wait for your levels to kind of slowly lower down, okay? Slowly lower down. And then once they hit a certain range, they restart the epigen at 25% lower of that original dose that you was getting before. Okay, so now they're trying to, they're adjusting, readjusting, adjusting, and your levels are going back and forth. But look, what happens if the units are short of staff, of nurses? Who is doing, who is monitoring all the hemoglobins of the patients to see who's falling in certain levels so you can address it? It's, it's crazy. So that's why you got to really be mindful when you get your lab work. Just don't leave that lab. When the dietitian comes and gives you your lab results for the month, don't just listen to it and then ball it up and throw it away. I've seen people do that, throw it in the trash. Save it, archive it so you can use it and go back and, and look at prior levels. And, 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 and compare them to what you're doing now. This is staying ahead of the game. And if you're interested in transplant, then you can see what you need to do to get on the list. What levels need to be um, under control. There we go, there we go, there we go. I was about to uh, start a new broadcast, but you know what I'm, I'm gonna tell you, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Uh, what I was saying this whole moment was in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and the camera flicked right back on. I'm telling you, this is no joke. I must be putting out some good information and the enemy is trying to stop it because my camera just completely stopped. So let's let's talk about anemia before uh, this 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 enemy try to throw some more tricks in it. But I know my God uh, is not going to allow that to happen. So let's get going. Anemia, take control to feel better. And we all know what anemia is. Anemia is a very common condition for people with kidney disease. So this is a common condition right out the uh, gate with people with kidney disease. And I'm gonna tell you why. 
uh, thankfully, it can be controlled. Anemia can be controlled. Absolutely right. Um, and then they say, before we talk about how to control it, let's uh, look at what anemia is. So let me just tell you why anemia is common with people with in kidney disease. So what happens, the kidneys, they excrete a hormone called erythropoietin. That hormone stimulates uh, the blood marrow, I'm sorry, the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. Now, if the bone marrow, if the kidneys stop working or they're failing, they're going to stop or they're going to decrease the lack of production of that hormone. And that happens, then that's where the anemia comes in because it's not getting that hormone to create more red blood cells. And that's where anemia comes in. But this is how they frame it up. I'm sorry, this is how they frame it up. What is anemia? Anemia means a person doesn't have enough red blood cells, which is true. Why does this matter? Well, red blood cells are like delivery trucks in your body. I mean, they move to all across uh, your system to deliver oxygen. Uh, what happens is the red blood cells are like little delivery trucks in our body. When we breathe, Red blood cells pick up fresh oxygen from our lungs. They deliver the oxygen to all the places in our body needed for energy, that need it for energy. So it's going all over the place, all over your system. These little, uh, you know, the, the uh, postal carriers, they work 24 seven, making every breath count. That's why having too few red blood cells is a problem. Because if you're low, if you're anemic, then you're, you know, the oxygen. And that's where the shortness of breath, the tiredness, and all that comes into play. Um, without them, the cells in our body don't get all the oxygen, which I just said they need for energy. This may cause us to feel tired, lightheaded dizzy, weak, uh, or short of breath. However, let me just share this. Another common problem with warriors in anemia uh, deals with GI problems where you may lose blood through the stool. Now, let me just say this. If you're a kidney warrior, you're on dialysis or had a transplant or kidney disease in general, and um, your bowel movement is dark or looks tar, like a tar color, dark, uh, more than likely uh, you have blood in your stool and you should definitely seek medical attention immediately um a lot again a lot of warriors uh bleed in their stools and that is another reason for anemia and um some have to go get what's called uh get scoped and where they look in in your stomach your gi um with the tube with the light on it absolutely if you if you vomit uh, and it may look like coffee grounds, as June Kaufman mentioned. Thanks for chiming in on that, June. Um, so why do people with kidney disease get anemia? We well, already explained that, but I want to tell you what the literature says. Kidneys are in charge of telling the body to make red blood cells. And we're talking about that, that same hormone that it, it excretes, uh, erythropoietin, but they're just not getting technical about it. When kidneys stop working, they don't tell our body to make enough red blood cells. This causes anemia. Basically, it's just what I said, but they, these guys, man, but that's, that's basically it.
Um, um, but that's not all. People with kidney disease often have less iron in their bodies as well. And, you know, some, uh, well, not some, but a lot of people with kidney disease take iron pills or we give you iron on the machine. Uh, iron is needed by red blood cells to make their delivery. I'm going to say it again. Iron is needed by red blood cells to make their deliveries. A red blood cell without iron, I repeat that again, a red blood cell without iron is like a delivery truck without gas. That's a good analogy. They can't make the delivery. <laughs> if, if you don't have any iron, red blood cell can't make the delivery. So how can anemia be controlled? So we, uh, so how can we, so how can anemia be controlled so we feel better? Controlling anemia. Thankfully, controlling anemia is possible with a combination of medications. And that's what I was talking about with the EPO or erythropoietin, which is a man-made synthetic, synthetic drug, which mimics the erythropoietin that's in, that was excreted by the kidneys. First, your doctor may give you iron pills, and we all know that iron pills cause constipation. If you're on iron pills right now and you have symptoms of constipation, please either try Metamucil, which is a, a, um, a laxative, powdery laxative, or, oh my God, it was on the tip of my tongue. Miralax. Miralax is a good one. That's what we recommend to our renal warriors. Is Miralax for constipation. Or Sorbitol. There's other ones out there, but I find I found success with the um, either the Sorbitol SPS solution that they give warriors if they have to miss dialysis for a period of time that helps um, eliminate the potassium out of your blood. Um, sometimes, which we give it all the time though, they're set up an IV iron infusion. Um, uh, this helps the red blood cells make their delivery. But like I said, if you're on dialysis, and you got to get iron. The doctor orders iron, and we give it to you IV uh, intravenously through the machine. Some places give it IV push in a three cc syringe. Uh, supposed to give it to you over a period of three to five minutes. Um, sometimes that doesn't happen. I've seen nurses just slam it in. Um, I've seen nurses forget, um, and then the patient comes off, and then they got to give it to them at the end. And the, and, and the person tastes the iron. Some warriors tell me that it tastes like licorice going through. Uh, some people uh, taste it, some don't. But uh, in some places, give it in a in a small hundred cc uh, normal saline bag, about that big. We draw up the dosage, we inject it into the bag, and we give it over uh, your treatment. Um, second, there is a drug that can help the body make red blood cells. And this is the drug that I'm talking about, epigen. Uh, this drug is called epigen, uh, EPO for short. Uh, it takes over the job of telling your body to make red blood cells, which can bring your red blood cell count back to healthy levels. So basically, EPO, again, is the man-made synthetic drug of erythro erythropoietin which is secreted by the kidneys. And when your kidneys no longer uh, function, it stops making that, um, that, um, um, oh my God, that um, synthetic hormone. And we administer EPO, which is a very expensive drug. Uh, 
I mean, you may see it on your bill. Some people told me they charge uh, astronomical prices for this drug. Um, so please just be aware of that as well and keeping your levels up because if you can keep, uh, if you don't have to get any EPO, if you're mindful, then you don't have to get charged for it. See, that's what I'm saying. This is a racket. This is, I mean, it's helping people. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Dialysis is helping folks, the epigen and all that, because of that. However, and that brings me back, you have to be mindful of this. And that brings me back to the person that I was going to speak about of Tanya. This, let me tell you, this warrior, and even Millie, who was on our show, Sisters Against uh, Kidney Disease, I have somebody who, who texts me that started dialysis two years ago, right? And no, not two years ago. She started dialysis and her numbers were, her function uh, was maybe around 20 or 15%. She started, it didn't go down, but she stopped. Check this out. She stopped her with, you know, with the consultation of it, her um, nephrologist, she stopped treatment totally changed her lifestyle, became a health and wellness coach and been, and been off dialysis for, uh, I wanna say three to five years. Don't quote me, cause I wanna have her on the show. She's been off dialysis three or five years with the GFR holding steady at I believe 15 to 20%. I believe it's 20% or 15, it kind of like bounces back and forth, but it doesn't go lower. And she's been doing this for five years, not on dialysis. Come on, it's, it's things that they're not sharing with people because once you get on dialysis, that's when the cha-ching, cha-ching, I mean, it's saving your life. But if you were in stage three or four, and you knew that you could prolong dialysis for years. Say if you knew that you could be in stage four for 10 years, 15 years. If you knew that you can not go on dialysis or progress it till however long until when the Lord says it's time through diet and exercise, and mindful thinking and and not consuming medication what? people are doing it people are waking up and and then i'm going to finish this off i mean it's pretty much finished um about the epo there it is it, it, it's finished but let me just say this 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 is what's getting people and share this and even if you're watching this broadcast right now, just think about what I'm about to say. If you have, now just think about this. Seriously, just for a moment, just put everything else to a side, you know, with the comments. Just don't get distracted about this. I just want you to see what I'm seeing and tell me if if I'm going crazy or what. But if diabetes, diabetes is diabetes, okay? Type one, type two. We all know type one is, is the uh, pancreas, uh, lack of production of insulin. So you gotta give yourself insulin. So you're born with that, okay? Juvenile diabetes, but type two diabetes, okay? Type two is preventable. 
That's a preventable disease, type two. This is what <laughs> people don't realize. Is type two, okay, if you never had diabetes, and all of a sudden you got diabetes. You wasn't born with it, okay? You don't have type one, so you wasn't born with it. If you say 30, 20, 30, 40 years old, and they told you you had diabetes, you'll be wondering, how did I, the hell did I get diabetes? Like my, my pancreas is working. What the hell, how did I get diabetes? No one that, well, somebody fed it to you, but you wonder how you get it. You know, it's like sugar diabetes. When people hear sugar diabetes, they think about candy and and sodas and, and all that type of stuff. That doesn't cause diabetes, okay? That doesn't cause type 2. It's the food that you're eating, okay? It's the food that you're eating. And what happens, that saturated fat that's covering the cells, the, the triglycerides, the, the, the bad cholesterol, why do you see they frame it all around diabetes, high cholesterol, heart disease? That's all centered around the same thing. So what happens is, when you when 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 you have plaque that's coating your cells, the insulin can't put the sugar or the dextrose in your cells for energy because it's blocked off by the plaque. So if your cells, because you know when you have plaque buildup from high cholesterol and they give you statins. And you know, when 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 that plaque builds up, the blood can't get through, so they call blockage. That's why you got to get coronary artery bypass because the blood can't get to it, the oxygen can't get to it. And that's where the ischemic heart disease, heart attacks because of lack of oxygen. So if if the plaque is doing that to your cells and causing that's, excuse me, it's causing the blockage from blood to get into your heart. What do you think it's doing to the cells throughout your body? And so the sugar can't get in the cells. The insulin can't push it. That's where the insulin resistance is resisting it. The insulin from putting the glucose or the dextrose or the sugar, however you want to call it, in the cells for energy and it's building up in the blood over a period of years. Now, this is what gets me. If that's happening, we know that diabetes is the leading cause of kidney disease. Now, put the two together. Diabetes is the leading cause of kidney failure. You have type two, which is preventable, but yet, People are going to the doctors and getting their diabetes medication refilled and having type 2 diabetes for 10 years. I know people who had type 2 for years, eight, nine years, and then they got kidney disease. Well, <laughs> what the? What? I mean, come on. This is a setup. Now I'm starting to get angry. This is where the education part is over now. This is where the advocacy comes in and the shirt that says, be aware, get tested. This is the setup now. You having diabetes, let's just say you got type one, I mean, kidney disease type two. And you, I mean, I'm sorry. Kidney disease stage two or stage three. You can still function, you can still manage. But let's say you got diabetes type two on top of that. Okay, and you're not being mindful. You just know you got diabetes type two and kidney disease stage three. And you're not being mindful and you're still doing 
what you did when you got this, okay? You're not changing anything. You're still doing it. That's going to push the disease faster. But this is what they're not telling you. They're not telling you to change your diet. They're not, they may be saying that, but they're steadily giving you diabetic medication. Every week or every two weeks, I'm seeing a new drug for diabetes come out. Why do you think that? Um, I can't think of it, but that you, you turn on the television, you're seeing multiple medication for diabetes type two come out to help you control it. Why do you need a medication that can help you do something that you could do on your own that you didn't have in the beginning? Come on, why give you a pill where all you have to do is modify your diet and exercise and then diabetes is gone? I know people who reverse type two that don't have it anymore. What? This is so freaking simple. No, it's not hereditary, at least not for blacks. We're not born with high blood pressure. It comes from multiple things. It's not a genetic where my mom didn't pass high blood pressure to me. I don't pass high blood pressure to my daughter. This is something due to environment, your diet, and just the stresses. And especially, and I'm just going to be honest because the truth is the truth with uh, Blacks, with some of the social conditions uh, that they have to deal with, the poverty, the disparity in education, and um, uh, lack of resources, the lack of finances, the lack of uh, medication, the lack of jobs. I mean, all this adds to stress, that adds to um, high blood pressure, uh, the, the, the lack of access to fresh food, fresh fruits and vegetables where you have to resort to eating food out of a can um, or fast food. All this contributes, okay? It's just a contributing factor of many, okay? And when this is compiled on many other things, uh, it, it just, it just, it's a, a bad recipe for kidney disease and diabetes and high blood pressure and uh, um, um, coronary artery disease. So, um, you know, again, with diabetes, all I'm asking you to do is, is look at type two. You got people walking around with seven, eight, nine, ten years with type two diabetes. And that's slowly killing their kidneys. No one's telling them. If you have type 2 diabetes, if you know somebody, seriously, if you're watching this, share this, share this. If you know somebody right now with type 2 diabetes, okay, and they got kidney disease stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, um, even stage 4, let them know that they've been duped. OK, especially if they had type two diabetes for more than three or four years, you've been duped. Because there's no way once you find out you have type two diabetes, your mission is to reverse that because it's preventable. Reverse that, because if you don't. The inevitable is going to happen. Diabetes is the leading cause of kidney failure. They didn't say which diabetes. They just say diabetes. It could be type 2, something that is preventable that's going to cause your kidney failure. I can't tell you. I cannot tell you throughout my 33 years of doing this, of the people that I work with in ICU 
or an acute setting that I started their first treatment and they said, if I only knew, because I asked them, how did you get kidney disease? Diabetes. Type one or type two? Type two. Damn, how long did you have it? Six, five years, seven years. And I would say, they didn't give you any information or they didn't tell you how you can slow the progression. No. You, you, I mean, your kidney doctor didn't give you no information or, or tell you anything to slow the progression. No. He may have said, do this or do that, but I didn't take it serious. I just went on thinking, you know, I was feeling good and everything was okay. A year and a half later, here I am. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing this until I die because even though there's gonna be clinics steadily being built, I wanna be right there giving the information, trying to stop people from going down this road. You know, the, the, you know I can't stop what's already happened, but what I can do is arm you with information so you can be prepared when you go through this battle that you can be prepared with a a a a plan a operational plan because we got to look at this strategically excuse me we got to look at this strategically and have a plan in place so you know what to do and what to expect when you're on your mission through this battle and some of the battle that's going to you want to come up against that you need to be prepared is problems probably with your access that's going to that's going to happen that's inevitable either your access may stop working or you got to go uh get it cleaned out a fistulogram see what's going on you have a catheter it's going to stop working at some point. It may have a um, can't get blood out of the catheter. Um, your machine may stop working. I mean, there's so many things that I can just sit here and, and tell you uh, that you're going to need to be on with, even with the anemia. You may get up one day and feel tired and not know where all this is coming from. You may feel good one moment, and the next moment you're dragging around, not knowing what's going on. You're short of breath when you walk uh, two blocks, when you used to walk three blocks and you felt good. That could be that can be you losing blood, your blood count dropping, and you're not even aware or don't know why it's dropping. So this is why it's very important to share this information and to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask us. Well, I'm not on the floor doing, you know, treatment anymore. But when I used to travel um, across the United States and going to different clinics, I, I, I feel comfortable going to any clinic in the United States. I can go into any clinic and work on any machine. Uh, even if I haven't worked on the machine, uh, haven't seen it. If you give me five to 10 minutes with that machine, um, I can operate it to take that patient off and run the treatment because all machines, whether they're made from Fresenius, Baxter's, uh, Phoenix, uh, next, well, not the next stage home, but, uh, and there's only so many machines out there that are in the field, but regardless, all machines have a blood pump, all machines have um, a dialyzer holder. All machines have, you know, you gotta, you gotta set your blood pump rate, you gotta set your dialysate flow rate. Um, everything is, is pretty much a standard operating procedure. You know, it's just how to do it. So know what 
you know, your your your, your treatment plan is, what's going on. But what I was saying is I can go into a, a lot of units and, and pretty much operate the machine and know what's going on. And what I was going to say was, um, you know, patients uh, that meet me for the first time, uh, they they ask me, who are you? You know, some people, uh, you know, I don't want to say rude, but if they never seen me, some people may not be having a good day, warriors, but they may say, um, who are you? I never seen you before, uh, but be it mean, however they ask me, I introduce myself, let them know who I am. How you doing? My name is Steve. Um, I'm your nurse for the day. Um, I just, I'm just going over your orders. Uh, normally you got orders sitting on top of the machine and what's supposed to happen. Let me tell you, in which I'm, I'm sure a lot of this is not happening. Um, excuse me. So if you, if you're a warrior on dialysis, this is what's supposed to happen, okay? When you come to treatment, technician put you on, okay? Your treatment started. Each place is different, but the, the, it's a guideline with one company that and it could be it could be state regs here in Maryland. The nurse is supposed to do an assessment within the first hour of the patient's treatment. So I take myself for instance. If I was coming to your chair right now, you on dialysis, and you saw me for the very first time, or I worked at your unit, I come to your uh, chair. And I introduce myself. How you doing? I'm I'm Steve. I'm a travel nurse. Um, I'm your nurse for the day. And there's some orders that sits on top of the machine. Okay, your your dialysis prescription. It sits on top of the machine, or it's hanging on the top like that. Okay. And what I do is get the order, and I'll look at it and make sure everything is set correctly that the technician who put you on is supposed to do. Make sure that you got the right dialyzer, that your time is set correctly, that your treat, yeah, your time is set correctly, that um, your blood pump is set correctly, you got the right dialysis flow rate, um, your heparin, did you get your heparin? If you want an infusion, is your infusion running? Is it set to the correct setting? um your access uh go over if you if you're running if you want a profile you want the right profile is your bicarb setting right your dialysis a bath if you're on the 3k is there a 3k bath there if you're on the three calcium or, or low calcium is that bath there uh, i'm just making sure that your not just me but the nurses are supposed to make sure that everything is set according to the doctor's orders on your machine um also i'm checking your dry weight um uh give or take and i'm sorry that uh, i gotta use you as a um as an example uh kenny warrior and out of uh of Leonard, Merle, saint Leonard's town merlin uh we was discussing about a dry weight but um with that dry weight now People may come in, you may have some problems cramping, but let me tell you, you this is where you gotta be mindful of, of your treatment because if you told me you was cramping, um, well, first, I would see your dry weight. I would look at your weight to see what you came in at. I say, okay, what was your weight? You may be taking off four liters. I may say to you, look like you taking off a lot. Uh, are you comfortable with that? Uh, what was your dry? I mean, what was your weight coming in? She'll tell me, or a person would tell me. And then I'll look at your dry weight, and you know, and then I'll look back um, at your treatment history, which would be on the second page. And I would be looking at what you left out at maybe your last six treatments. And if you left out at different weights, I would kind of, kind of get an average of what you left out at, and and ask the technician to reset you or talk with you 
to see if it's all right and explain to you why. Some people, they think taking off more fluid is going to do the trick, but in essence, it may do the exact opposite and cause cramping and uh, hypotension and stuff. So the nurse is supposed to come around and do this, and a lot of them don't do it or are so um, um, busy that they don't think about it. They're just trying to you know, get a medication, do the quick assessment and keep it moving. But you you got to do this type of assessment to kind of see where you're at. But if they, this is what I'm saying. If they can't do it, that's why you need to be on to do it yourself. So you don't have to worry about anybody else. Again, like I said, you have someone, so, you know, someone has your life in your hands and what they do or how they do it could be uh, literally a life or death situation. So I've been on here long enough, uh, kind of gotten off the beaten path, but thank you for watching this. I'm getting ready to go in here and um, make me some fish, um, not fried, it's baked uh, rock fish. I got a little small piece that I only could afford. So I got that and some Brussels sprouts, maybe like five Brussels sprouts. Uh, you gotta gotta reduce the consumption, especially when you're working on a very very tight budget. I mean, very tight. So, guys, thanks for watching the kidney disease education moment. Uh, again, every Friday, 8 p.m. right here. Um, next week, I'm going to be talking about patients' rights and responsibilities. Thanks, Ed, for chiming in. I'd like to thank all you guys. Um, for commenting uh, next week. I will answer the comments. Uh, I wanted to do it. I know I kind of went over about, uh, about an hour, I think, in what, 15 minutes, almost an hour and a half, 90 minutes. But look, your life is important. Warriors' lives are important. So uh, no time. Uh, uh, let me your 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 time there's no uh limit on your life especially the education that i can give out so um i thank y'all thanks ed please tune in next week tune in this sunday uh sunday morning transplant coffee talk as we have on the queen of social media kidney warriors group june kaufman june thank you for all your support Really, I really appreciate your support. Um, she's gonna be on here to share her extensive story on her journey with uh, kidney disease. And it's been a long, I wanna send it, it's gonna be a long, uh, uh, it's been a long battle for June, but she's made it to the other side. And again, uh, other warriors are, are here to support. and. You know, can't wait to Sunday to talk with June again, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, June. I will definitely send you that link uh, either this evening or tomorrow morning. You will have the link. And please, let me just say this now while I'm on here, June. Uh, once I send you the link, please uh, don't do anything with it, uh, with that particular link that I send you. What you can do though is, depending on what phone you have, if you have an Apple, go, I mean, if you have an iPhone, go to the Apple store and download the B Live. Uh, you can see the, um, the, the um, logo is uh, orange and uh, uh, burgundy. It says B Live. Uh, download that, but once you download it, don't do anything, please. Uh, or if you got an Android, go to the Google Store and download the app for Be Live. You can do that right now. But once you download it, don't open it up. Don't do anything to it. Okay, just download it and let it sit, and then um, I'll give you instructions with the link that I send you because what's been happening, June, um, is people, when we 
send them the link, they download the app and then re-download it and then they see their face. And it, it, it's just um, just a ball of confusion, which, you know, impedes um, starting the show and stuff. So I actually helped some, you know, try to work somebody through a two hour session where we had to just reschedule the show. I mean, that was a long time. This is just a, a simple two-step process. Uh, download the link, I mean, the app. Uh, no, depending on what phone you got, uh, if it's an Android, uh, go to the Google store. Maybe the AT&T may have, I'm not sure. But if you got an Android, go to the Google uh, uh, store or Google app. If you got an iPhone, go to the uh, Apple store and download BeLive uh, application for free. And again, don't do anything uh, with it. Just download it and let it sit until you hear from us. Uh, again, guys, thanks a lot for uh chiming in thanks for the comments we really appreciate all your support yeah go to the apple store they have it and you can't use it for the ipad it has to be on your iphone no i'm sorry i'm sorry i stand corrected you can go to the uh, to the apple store and you can use your ipad or your iphone you cannot use the mac but I have a, a Mac and I can't use it. But you can use your Apple or iPad, but you have to download the application Be Live TV from the Apple Store. Once you do that, just let it sit until you hear from me. Guys, thanks a lot. Please share this. Thank you. Uh, God bless you. We appreciate all your support. Um, let's get this movement going to education, even with this, with uh, the urban health outreach media facebook page this is going to be like the oprah Winfrey network of information for kidney disease uh uh warriors this, uh we hope people could come to this page non-stop and just click on videos and see the recap recast of videos and seeing live videos like this um so please like our page share it uh, tune in Sunday, Sunday morning transplant coffee talk. Um, and we got a big surprise coming up uh, January 15th on smashing kidney disease, uh, eight o'clock Tuesday night. I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss this. Uh, basically, we want to have a celebrity. I'm not talking, about, I mean, a celebrity, a real, real celebrity. Okay um and i'm sure you know you know more will probably be revealed uh in the next uh week or maybe earlier um a partner uh tamika moore is working on the advertisement for this but yes we're going to have a celebrity on here i thank god for uh making that happen this celebrity deals with kidney disease and that goes back to what I'm saying. We all know that this disease has no name on it. You could be rich, you could be poor, you could be black, you could be white, you, you could be Asian. I mean, it, whew, man, this is, I mean, that's why we, it, it's an all frontal, uh, all out frontal assault on this disease so you know just be on the lookout for uh this interview with this celebrity coming up on june january the 15th so again thanks for watching Aaron. love you thanks for watching you've been my biggest supporter since day one when i started in 2014 that's four years i mean you was there throughout I mean, just when I first got off the ground, I mean, I'm not nowhere. I'm just, you know, a little bit off the ground, like at the curve level. But, <laughs> but thank you, Aaron, so much for all your support. And I look forward to um, coming down to St. Leonard's Town, Maryland to visit you, have lunch, interview you, um, 
and just getting to meet you and know you um, outside of the uh, social media setting. So guys, thanks again. Uh, love y'all. Thanks. God bless. And see you Sunday morning. Talk to you soon. Peace.